Forest family, what's good? Welcome to Living by the Upward, where I talk about upwards I'm passionate about. Today, we are going to dive deep into the GA campgrounds at Electric Forest. I know these campgrounds very well. I have camped six times in the GA campgrounds, and I have camped once in Good Life. So I know this festival like the back of my hand. I've been attending since 2014, and I'm really hoping I can help you out if you're new here, and I'm really excited for you to come to Electric Forest. I just want to let you know that I do plan on returning to Good Life this year, so I will be releasing a Good Life camping video next as a part of my Electric Forest series. So if you are interested in learning more about Good Life, make sure you're subscribed. I also do have a ton of content out on my channel if you need camping tips, camping essentials, what food to bring to a camping music festival, how to fly your camping gear out to a festival. I've done all that and I have it all on my channel, especially with some underrated camping items as well. I will link them below or throughout this video so you could check those out. This is strictly going to be more about the actual site map how to get there, what the checkpoints are like, and what the GA, how you can navigate the GA campgrounds at Electric Forest. All right, so knowing the hours of operation is pretty important. There are two options as far as coming early arrival in the GA campgrounds. So there is a Tuesday load-in. This is an option that you would get for your car. It's per car, not per person. So if you're carpooling, it does help you save a little bit. And this will allow you to enter the GA campground starting at noon, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time on Tuesday. This pass is good until 11.59 p.m. on Tuesday, and then it switches over to the Wednesday early arrival. So if you feel like you're going to be traveling in between Tuesday and Wednesday, and you don't know when you're going to get there, hopefully you will have the correct pass and plan accordingly to get there at the correct day. So there also is a Wednesday early arrival for GA, and that pass starts basically right at midnight um, on Wednesday, and it goes throughout Thursday, and then the regular festival hours are Thursday through Sunday. Now, the Wednesday early arrival, same thing. It's just a pass for your car. You don't need it individually, and it just allows you to come early and set up. As far as re-entry, plan to be on site. Once you're on site, you're on site pretty much. They really don't want people driving around. It's actually prohibited to be driving around, to be leaving. Uh, they do make exceptions if it's like something like medical that you need, like an actual prescription or something important. However, for the most part, once you're on site, you're on site. If you forgot something, they do have a general store, which I'll get into later as far as the amenities on the GA campground. They also do have a complimentary shuttle to Walmart. So if there's something that you forgot, you can always take that over to Walmart as well. So there are options available, but just plan on being there and leaving your vehicle wherever you park it once you get on, on site. If you are staying off site, which I feel like most people don't, but if you are one of those people, just know that there is a daily parking lot and you can park your car there. Um, you can't leave your car overnight. Uh, the lot does close one hour after the music ends, so be mindful of that. You don't want your car towed. All right, so now that we know when we can arrive, let's talk about the actual map. So I'm a very visual person, so I'm going to toss the map up for you and highlight some key points. This map right here is very loose site map. So once it gets closer, they usually do release a map that looks a little bit more detailed. And I'm going to show you what that will look like a little bit later in this video. But there are two entry and exit points. There's the south entrance and there is the north entrance. Some roads you kind of want to be familiar with. There's Route 31, which I will pop up and overlay a Google Maps right now so that you could see. Route 31 is kind of on the outskirts of Forest. And once you exit, you'll be on Winston Road. Winston Road is pretty much one of the main roads that you take in to the festival and there's a lot of local farmers and people here that are really excited for us to be back at Forest. You'll see signs, welcome back Forest family, stuff like that. Just be mindful of your speed and 
please respect the people that live here and allow us to come here every year to this magical place. Just be mindful of following the directions and, you know, don't speed or anything like that. You also have Water Street. Water Street is pretty much what takes you into the GA campgrounds. And then you have Clay Road. Clay Road is actually on the festival site. It is a road that kind of divides the whole festival in half. So pretty much I would say majority of the festival you're going to be coming from the south unless you live in northern Michigan. That's just kind of how it is. Pretty much everyone comes from the south and you exit off of I think it's 136 is the exit. There'll be instructions though on the highway so you won't have to worry about that. And once you exit, a lot of people are probably going to get directed into the southern part. Anything south of Clay is probably going to get filled up first. So pretty much you have GA camping, group camping, you have uh, walk-in tent camping, and majority of GA is going to all get filled in from the south. Uh, once everything is filled up there, they're going to fill GA up from the north entrance, which typically is it's um, a section called Blueberry, and I'll get into the camping neighborhoods in a little bit, but basically anyone that is in Camp Higher Love, Camp Hush, the RVs, and anyone that comes late enough that can't fit in the GA south section is going to go through the north entrance. Let me talk about how the checkpoints work. If you have not been to a music festival, this is how security checkpoint works. You're going to drive your car up and there's going to be multiple lanes and you're going to stop and park your car. And then what they're going to do is they're going to check your wristbands and they're going to also search your vehicle. They're going to mark your vehicle on your windshield with some, you know, like washable chalk or whatever it is, you know, window paint uh, so that their traffic team can better direct you. So whether you are GA or group camping, they will mark that on your windshield. And what they're checking for in your car is pretty much prohibited items. So glass, you should not have glass, alcohol bottles, full length mirrors are glass. You might get that confiscated. Explosives, fireworks, open flame grills, you know, basically all this shit that you shouldn't have. And you can read their frequently asked questions page of prohibited items and if you follow those instructions, you should have no problems, you guys. If you have a group of people with separate cars and you all want to camp next to each other, but you're not in group camping, it's extremely important that you meet up prior to you go to drive into these checkpoints because it will be really hard to stick together if you don't drive in together. So I would say most people meet up at the Walmart in Muskegon. It's about 20 minutes Mm, yeah, about 20 minutes, 25 minutes from Electric Forest. A lot of people meet up there. That way you could just drive the end of the 20 minutes together and you could drive in together. And it's just much easier to stick together if you're trying to group with uh, camp with a specific group of people, but you don't have the group camping option. All right. So now we're through the checkpoint and depending on what time you get there, there might be a line. So it just varies. Sometimes we have waited in a, in a line. There's other times where we've just driven right in and parked. So just be patient as people are directing people where to go. These are the different sections that make up the GA campground. So you have GA camping. GA stands for general admission. Pretty much is, I don't want to say free for all, but pretty much you just don't know where you're going to end up or who you're going to end up next to or when you're going to end up where. It all just kind of depends on how they're filling in these GA sections. Then you have group camping, which is highlighted on the map. This is an add-on purchase for groups of 20 people or more that want to secure a spot together. And what this does is it guarantees that you and your friends can camp together even if you're not arriving at the same time. So, for instance, if I did group camping last year, I arrived on Thursday. Other people arrived on Wednesday. Other people arrived on Saturday. And they have it secure where you can do that in advance because they've had those the, the, that amount of people allotted for already. So I do recommend if you're doing group camping or you're new to group camping that you have at least one to two team leads that kind of keep your camp, your group camp organized, meaning start a Google spreadsheet. This is what me and my camp at Burning Man do. We basically start a spreadsheet, we state our name, we state the type of vehicle that we're going to be coming in, 
who's coming with us if anyone's carpooling definitely try to carpool if you can um we state what size our tent is and how many tents we're bringing if we have an easy up canopy things like this it's kind of important just because you do only have a designated space for your group camp that forest will give you and it just makes it a little easier if you kind of have a layout planned or you could coordinate who's bringing what. So I do recommend trying to do some pre-planning if you can so that your layout at your group camp is a little better. And like I said, you don't have to do that, but it just makes life a lot easier, especially if you have multiple groups within your group camp, which is what happened last year. We had tons of people like some of them knew one person but didn't know everyone else. And so it was like separate groups and there was a lot of things that were kind of like doubled up that we didn't need so I do think it helps to prepare beforehand if you're in group camping um, another section of of GA is the tent only camping which pretty much means you do not have a vehicle with you and it's just walk-in only so I do suggest packing light if you're doing walk-in only because I don't know how you're going to carry all your shit if you don't have a vehicle so just be mindful of that there's also the RV section. I feel like the RV after parties in the GA campgrounds at Forest are some of the most fun parties I've been to. Met a lot of lifelong friends at these parties. There's just epic sunrise sets and it's so much fun. So you definitely have to check that those out. And then there's other sections of GA and I would kind of consider these like a more elevated experience. So think of it as like a GA plus that other festivals would call it a GA plus, but those campgrounds that are within GA that are kind of a more quiet and elevated experience are Maple Woods, Camp Higher Love, Camp Hush, and new this year, they have the Lucky Lake Camping and RV. All these elevated GA campgrounds do have showers and flush toilets, and it's a little bit more quieter and more spacious, so just keep that in mind. Now, here's a more detailed map I said I would show you that they should release closer to the festival, and it tells you all the roads that are within the, the GA campgrounds. And so you're going to notice that these roads kind of create camping neighborhoods. So in the past, they've had from north to south, they have the clay road, which I showed you earlier. It kind of divides the festival in half, and that's where the shuttles will run. If you are in Blueberry, you could get picked up by a shuttle, and it will drive you closer up clay, closer to where the GA entrance is. Um, there's also pedicabs. The pedicabs can bike on clay and throughout all of these roads in the festivals. So you'll have that, Broadway, Main Street, which I'll get into in a little bit, Airstrip Avenue, Lucky Lane, and then from west to east, in the past, it's been Abbott Road, AM Street, Maple Street, Beale Street, Lewis Street, and Golden Road. So it's pretty much main roads that have street signs, and they kind of create these camping neighborhoods. So the different camping neighborhoods all have a name. So for example, there's Camp Blueberry. There's these different neighborhoods, and all these neighborhoods have neighborhood pods. The pods are designated by animals so there's the lion there's the tiger there's the bear oh my no I'm kidding um, there's also the wolf and the chameleon they have different animals and so uh, everything that I just mentioned is really important that you figure out once you park and have your tent set up and have your whole campsite set up make sure you figure out where you're at and what direction you are in from Main Street and the main entrance. You really need to kind of know what streets you are near. And if you are um, near a pod, figure out what animal that is, okay? Because they can look a little similar. So make sure you really know if it's a bear versus, you know, a tiger, okay? Because <laughs> um, they're kind of like blow up animals that are lit up at night. Um, and just kind of figure out a landmark. If you're not near a pod, figure out how far you are from designated pod. You know what I mean? So just kind of figure that out so that you know how to get into the festival, but more importantly, how you know how to get back to your campsite. Because I'm telling you, once you get spun, you guys, game over if you don't know where you're going, okay? <laughs>
I just want to kind of talk about the distance of these different camping neighborhoods to the main entrance. So I've camped in Blueberry before, which is all the way in the back on the north side. And it took me 25 minutes without stopping to get from my campsite to the GA entrance. I would say that there's other areas like I feel like Lucky Lake is pretty far back there even though that's like an elevated camping experience it is like near the lake and it's a more quiet area and I feel like that's going to be another like 20 minute walk as well I've camped back where um where Camp Hush is as well that used to be called Camp Sunny and I've camped back there as well and it was a far walk because they they didn't have the walking path. Now they have a walking path that you could cut through, and I, I bet you it shaves off at least 10 minutes. But I'm just letting you know these times just so you can kind of plan accordingly, depending on what sets you want to see. It could take you a while to walk into the main entrance and then to actually walk through the venue. Also takes a lot of time, um, so just try to plan ahead if there's someone you want to see specifically. <laughs> Now I'm going to talk about the camping amenities. So like I mentioned, there's the neighborhood pods. Those are the animals. They're the blow up animals. They're kind of landmarks with, uh, within the GA campgrounds. There's the lion, the tiger, the bear. There's also a wolf. There's been a chameleon in the past. So at those pods, you do have shower stations. They run typically from Thursday to Sunday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. $10 per shower. Um, all of the elevated GA campgrounds that I talked about, like Hush and Lucky Lake, stuff like that, Maple Woods, they do have complimentary showers. Um, also at these pods, you should have some type of like information station as far as RV pump and dump questions. Um, there's also bathrooms throughout the festival. They are porta potties, so just come prepared. Uh, every festival, you know, you just want to be prepared. Bring some baby wipes in your backpack or your hydration pack or your fanny pack or whatever you're carrying around just so that you have those because they keep them pretty clean, but at certain times they can get kind of grimy. So it is what it is. Also, some other amenities within the GA campgrounds is Main Street. So Main Street is this very large, wide street that has a lot of clothing vendors, food vendors. There is the brainery there. The brainery is where they host a lot of workshops and panel discussions with thought leaders and different people within the festival community. And they will have their own separate schedule that is released before Forest. So highly recommend check something out at the brainery. Um, they also have tons of, um, food that are um that almost like diners and like I don't know like elaborate food options so definitely check out Main Street and stroll around there and they will have some events going on if you have early arrival there uh there also is a general store on the GA campground site and this store has like things that you may have forgotten. It is pretty pricey. There's also ice at the general store. So you can go and get ice there if you need it for your campsite. There are shuttles that are complimentary. You will have some shuttles that run on clay. If you're really far back, like towards the west northern side of the campgrounds all the way to the east, they'll run you up there. Um, there's also the complimentary Walmart shuttle that runs as well. And then you also have pedicabs, a part of the GA campgrounds. Now, I'm going to give you some tips for pedicabs. They are self-made. They're independently contracted. What that means is that they are not paid by Electric Forest, okay? They come to these festivals and they work for themselves. So each driver, depending on what their bike is decorated like, how much time they spent decorating it, how many seats it has, how many people they are biking on the bike and how far they're taking you they will come up with their own price that they feel is fair for the work that they are doing and you know throughout the festival they have to do bike repairs if something happens to their bike so they create their own prices and you know it's important to know that just because you might get a different price from a different driver um, depending on how far you're going and how many people you have 
And please pay these people <laughs> because there's like a lot of stories of people running off of the bikes and it's just not cool, you guys. So if you're going to utilize that service, make sure you have cash on you and make sure that you tip your drivers and, um, you know, be respectful of them because they're there to work and that is their business. You know what I mean? Um, another thing as far as the pedicabs, just be mindful that they may not have been to Electric Forest before. So don't expect them to know where your campsite is. That's why it's so important that you figure out where your location is, what roads you're by, what camping neighborhood you're in, so that you know, so that you could direct people as to where you need to go because it's really not their responsibility. It's your responsibility to know that. Okay, so let's talk about the checkpoints going into the festival. So everyone in GA, the main point of entrance to the festival grounds is at the east end of Main Street, and it's at the Clock Towers, which is by the stage Tripoli. You're going to see a Ferris wheel. Uh, you're going to see the Clock Towers, and there is that main entrance. There's one large main entrance for everyone in GA. Usually on the left-hand side, there is a staff line. So if you're a part of staff, you can utilize that line. In the past, on the right-hand side, they've had the Electric Forest loyalty. So in the past, that's been four in the forest and six in the forest. Now they've upped their loyalty program, and they're six, seven, eight, nine, and ten in the forest. So I'm not quite sure if they're going to just still have everyone go together. But in order to utilize that line, it's a much shorter line, and you have to show your loyalty pin in order to use that line. Um, I would say the security on Thursday could the line could be long okay because that's when the festival first opens and everyone especially if they've been there for early arrival they're super stoked to get there and they just want to get inside so there have been lines on Thursdays before um, as far as what you're allowed to bring into the festival make sure you're checking that frequently asked questions page it's something I recommend in all my videos you should just look over it yourself I look over it every year and this is going to be my eighth forest because you just never know if things change you just want to be prepared you don't want anything that is important to you or value valuable to you to be taken away um, I do suggest that depending on where your campsite is you might want to try to get a locker if you're in GA only because you are, might have to carry in your hoodie or carry in warmer clothing for at night. Um, and you can enter and re-enter the festival grounds to your campground, but it just could take you a while depending on where you're at on the campgrounds. So just be mindful of that. Um, and just, I would time yourself walking in the first time around if you're not familiar with the campground so that you could actually see how long it takes you. And then you could kind of better gauge if you want a locker or if you want to just start carrying stuff in and just stay in once you're in, you're in. That's usually what I would do when we were really far back in past years. I was like, there's no way I'm fucking coming back here. So I would lug all my shit in and just keep it with me. Just want to touch upon the weather really quickly. Forest weather, for the most part, is so nice. I feel like it's warm during the day. It can get a little chilly at night, and it's varied throughout the years. There's been some really cold, chilly nights, and then there's been other times where it's, like, totally comfortable. Um, there are years that it's rained and had crazy high winds where we've been evacuated from the forest because of storms, so... Some years are good with the weather. Other times it can kind of be crazy. And that's just because Lake Michigan is like not too far from where we are. And the weather can come off the lake and it could just be completely crazy. So just be prepared for all types of weather and you should be good. And make sure you have comfy clothes and shoes, especially if you're going to attend the RV parties after hours. There's so much fun, but you just want to be comfortable. So make sure you have like a onesie or sweatpants or a sweatsuit or something like that. These are just some general tips you should know if this is your first camping music festival. And I know this video is getting a little long and I feel like this one's just jam packed with a lot of information because the GA campgrounds are just a huge part of forest. So if you're still with me, thanks for sticking with me. But these are some things you should know in general about camping music festivals. Always know who your neighbors are, make friends with your neighbors, look out for one another, 
Okay, this is how you know whoever's supposed to be there is supposed to be there and vice versa. You want them to know who you are so that if someone's at your campsite that's not you, they know, hey, who is that type of thing. Um, speaking of people being at your campsite that might <laughs> that you don't recognize, there are people that walk around and hustle at these GA campgrounds. Okay, so... They sell their own jewelry. They sell pins. They'll come around with pin boards, their art prints, and they pretty much, you know, hustle the GA campgrounds with their small business. So just be prepared for people to like pop into your campsite. That is very, very common at camping music festivals and especially at Forest. There's a lot of people that sell their jewelry and stuff like that. So be prepared for that. I would say in general, GA. Depending on where you're at, it really does depend where you're at, but it can be loud, okay? Everyone wakes up once the sun comes up, everyone's hot, everyone gets up, everyone starts playing music. It could be loud at night, depending on where you're at with the after parties. So just be prepared. Make sure you have a sleep mask and earplugs so that you could sleep through the night or even the day. <laughs> just make sure you come prepared. A few things that I'm going to cover. There are no open flames at forest so some camping festivals like Halloween you can have open flame you can't have that at forest you can't have open flame grills you can have the grills that have the mini propane t tanks and stuff like that but just make sure you're checking the frequently asked questions page on the prohibited items super important you don't want to roll up with something that you can't have and have it confiscated um, another tip I have is limit your trash so Make sure that you utilize the water refill stations, refill your water, refill your shower water. If you don't plan on using the showers on the GA campgrounds, if you have like your own portable shower, utilize those water stations. Don't be buying individual bottles or jugs of water if you don't need to. If you have any new lights or batteries or camping gear, take them out of the boxes and the plastic and all that shit. There's so much waste that's created at festivals, so like it really helps out if you could just leave all that shit at home. If you have new festival clothes, you know how we do. If you have new festival clothes, cut the tags off. Another thing is just if you see trash, just pick it up. There's trash cans everywhere. Try not to litter. If you're new to forest, this is a very clean festival. Everyone really takes care of the forest, keeps it clean. Try to do that with your campsite as well. Um... Just, you know, don't litter your cigarette butts. Use a ashtray at your campsite. Use a portable ashtray inside the festival if you're a smoker. I can't stress that enough to please do that. Um, just try to keep everything clean, as clean as possible, and it just makes a way better festival camping experience, trust me. If you need any more tips, I know this was a lot and jam-packed, but if you need any more tips, I have a lot of great content on my channel as far as how to prepare for a camping music festival. I have a checklist that you can download. I have what type of foods you could bring to a camping music festival. You definitely want to bring foods and snacks, you guys. You don't want to be underprepared when you're camping in GA, okay? You don't want to be spending a shit ton of money on all the festival food. You definitely need to be a little bit self-reliant. So I have that video out. I have how to fly your camping gear to a festival. I have underrated camping items, festival essentials. I have it all already on this channel so make sure you're subscribed make sure you like this video if you found it helpful thanks so much for watching if you want to see me at electric forest please stop by the ef radio booth i just released a video that i'm going to be working with the electric forest radio team this year and doing some forest fam interviews artist interviews <laughs> all the good stuff so tune into electric forest radio come visit me in the booth say hi if you see me at the festival and i'm really excited for you guys i'm so excited let's do it see you in the forest guys Peace.